And so number eight from paper two of the new hire, 2015, the only one that's different from the current old hire paper two. I've just done the videos for numbers one to eight of the old hire. And remember grumbling there thinking they looked much harder than previous years and wondering whether that was because it was the old hire and you should be doing the new hire instead. And here this, these turn out to be the same. Apart from, of course, this one. This has got an extra question, paper two. This has got this question eight. Now, what is it anyway? It's an optimization. Now, it's one where you don't have to derive this equation. Although you can see where it comes from. There's a crocodile on one bank, a zebra on the other bank. And it's to do with what's the quickest way to get across there. Is it faster to go along the land and then go across? or to go halfway across, and so on. And you can see how this equation comes about. Here's a little right angle triangle. It doesn't tell you any information about speeds, but it's all in there. There's a right angle triangle, that must be this part. Because if that's x, and this is the square root of 36 and x squared, that must mean that this is six. They're ever six meters wide. And the five and the four aren't speeds, because time is distance over speed, they must be reciprocals of speed. So they must be rates. But notice how this is in tenths of a second, deciseconds. So that must be the number of deciseconds per meter in water, and that must be the number of deciseconds per seater per meter on land. Anyway, that's got nothing to do with it. It's an optimization question, but it's got a limit. X can't just be anything. X goes between zero and 20. Now, whenever you've got that situation, where x falls within an interval, then the way the question done, or the way it is done, is you establish the values at the end points and test if there's any stationary values in between. But the actual nature of the stationary value doesn't matter. It's only which one is overall the biggest and the smallest. The prime candidates are the end points. And you find your stationary points and compare them against them. If they happen to exceed them, then they become the greatest or least values. And so that's why it's led you through here. Because the first thing it says is, calculate the time it takes if it does not travel in land, and calculate the time if it swims the shortest distance. So one, if it does not travel in land, it means it's going straight across the water. So that means x is 20. So you're working out the value of this when x is 20. So it'll be five times the square root of 36 plus 20 squared, plus four times, of course this is zero, 20 minus 20. So that part's obviously zero, and this part comes to 104.4, etc. but those are tenths of a second. So maybe we'll change that to 10.4 seconds. Then it said, what if it swims the shortest distance? So it's going to go all 20 metres. So, I mean, x is zero. So that'll be 5, 36 plus 0 squared, plus 4 times 20 minus 0. I would need a calculator for this, because that's root 36, which is 6, 5, 6 is r. 30 plus 80 is 110, but again, that's tenths of a second. So it's 11.0 seconds. Not a lot in it. So overall, one of those could be the smallest and the other could be the biggest, unless there's a stationary value which might exceed one of them. So it comes to the main marks, eight marks for this. Between these two extremes, there is one value of x which minimizes the time taken. Find this value of x and hence calculate the minimal, minimum possible time. Well, again, Within an interval, the end points will give you the maximum minimum unless there's a stationary value in between. So that's what we're going to look for. Is there a stationary value? Well, before you do that, I have to put that into a suitable form. That's 5, and that's 36 plus x squared to the power a half. And you may as well multiply that out. 80 minus 4x. So, now search for it. What's the derivative? Function of a function. Multiply by the power, 5 up and 2. Take 1 off the power. 
And if it isn't just an x inside, then multiply by the derivative of that, and the derivative of 36 plus x squared is 2x. Plus, that'll be a 0, minus, that'll be 4 for this part. Now, I'll just tidy this up, because the 2s will cancel, leaving you 5x. That negative means it should be underneath, and that half means it's a square root. Minus 4. So there's an expression for the derivative. Now, is there an optimum value then? Is this ever equal to 0? So I've got this equation to solve. 5x over root 36 plus x squared minus 4 equals 0. Now, whenever you've got a square root, you know you're going to get rid of that. There's fractions in it. I don't want fractions. And there's a square root. I don't want square roots. But I can't square both sides just now when there's these two terms sitting side by side. Either just take the 4 over and then square it, or take the 4 over and also at the same time multiply by root 36 plus x squared. Now you can square both sides to get rid of this square root. So squaring this side, 25x squared. Squaring this side, 16, and that just goes back to 36 plus x squared. So you've got 25x squared equals 16 times 36 is 576, I feel I should have known that, plus 16x squared. Almost there, bring that over, 9x squared. 576 divide by 9, that's 664, looking good. So you've got the square root of that, x equals 8, because x is positive. Now it comes to the business of it says, which minimises it, strictly speaking in a question like this, where there's an interval. It's sufficient just to determine where the stationary point is and not what its nature is because its value will speak for itself. So whatever the value of this is, so I'll work out t at 8 and then compare with these two, that will then justify whether it's a maximum or a minimum or whether they're both there. So putting it back into this, you've got what? You've got 5 times the square root of 36 plus 8 squared, which is 64, plus 4 times 20 minus 8, which is 12. Don't need a calculator here, there's 100. So that's 10, so that's 50. So it's 50 plus 48. 98, again, that's tenths of a second, so 9.8 seconds. So here we can see, comparing that with these, the maximum value, the maximum time taken would be 11 seconds, and the minimum time taken would be 9.8. So, minimum time is 9.8 seconds when x equals 8 metres. Now, of course, you could leave it all in tenths of a second and have 104 and 110 and 98. Another thing you might do just to play safe is just justify that that is in fact a minimum. Shouldn't be necessary going by the nature of this question, but if you felt that you wanted to put it down, then you could put a table that justified it. There's x, it happens at 8. You've got t dashed of x here, you know that's 0. And then pick a number before and after, like 1 and 10. So at 1, you've got 5 over so this will just be a fraction because it's like five, it's like five sixths or something, but taking away four makes that negative. At ten, you've got fifty divided by something that's going to be less than twelve anyway, because it's a hundred and thirty-six, square root of hundred and thirty-six. So that means that this answer will be more than four, so that'll go positive, only just, which means you've got a minimum. Put that down just as like a wee safety measure. Strictly speaking, it shouldn't be relevant to this question, not with an interval.